is to take the rotational uh, motion mm -hmm. uh, of the disc, and actually merely, merely of the surface of the disc, and translate that into more motion, but dependent upon another variable. So when you're looking at a differential, you will have a figure of um, uh, dy by dx, which is a differential equation. The change in y is dx is dependent on, it's looking at the differences of x. So y depends on some other variable. So uh, the input to this is the, is it what's called the determinant in maths? Yes. And the output is the actual result of the calculation. Mm -hmm. But it's continuously doing it because the machine is constantly running. And it's dependent upon that position in there. So at the very center of the circle, we have a displacement of zero. And Ian, is it in the positive now? It's in the positive, yes. Let me just get this right, because it's depending the on which way the, the table rotates. So from the center to this half of the disk, you're dealing with positive um, integration. Mm -hmm. And when you're going from the center of the disk to here, it's negative. So Ian, what, what is going on in terms of the disk and the little wheel here. Just talk us uh, uh, through the, the importance of the contact of that. Yes, indeed. So when the integrating disk is zeroed, um, the wheel is actually in the center of the disk. And if I turn the disk slightly, you can see that the wheel is absolutely stationary. So I'm just going to bring my finger in. So you mean mm. that wheel? That one there. And that one there. That one there, yeah. the screwdriver. is absolutely stationary. It's like there's no night and day on the North Pole. Yeah. <laughs> now, as I displace this to be more and more positive, you will see that the wheel is starting to... It's just starting it to slightly move. Moved, yeah. And then the further I get away from the centre, this wheel will go around faster and faster and faster. Now, because this is glass, mm -hmm and the wheel is being driven from the glass, it's very, very um, susceptible to slipping. And that's the last thing you want to do. If it slips, then your calculations are null and void. Which we saw last night when yes, it slipped once or twice. Yes, yeah. yes, we, we did indeed. Yeah. And that's the most important part of it. Mm -hmm. So in, to, in order to increase um, the likelihood of it not sleeping or to improve its contact in, what have you done? Um, what I've done, first of all, is to put some weights on the shaft. So the bar is slightly flexible, yeah, and you, you've done what? And there's also a, a, a needle bearing point in there, I don't know whether you can see it. So even though there's great force applied, yeah. what, what does the needle bearing do? Then? Um, it just reduces the friction to reduces something as small as possible. Yeah, you've got that on. Yep. And, but even so, the output um, will have to drive a pen and any other devices, but there's still not enough uh, torque transferred from here to the wheel to drive anything, mm. and it will just slip. Mm. Which is why there was a problem, even though the machine was conceived of, yeah. many, many years before it was yeah. made, it couldn't yeah. work because yes. no one could figure that problem yeah. out. Yeah. So we've got like a, a, a large steam engine, uh, or a, mo a modest steam engine, modest steam engine. a small, small yeah. steam engine here, and it's been asked to pull a whole load of carriages. Yes. And you know, the larger the, the parts of the, the machine that are added and added and added, the more work that this poor little wheel is going to have to do. Yeah. So we need to have some kind of buffer. And if any of the electronics people are out there, they'll know what an electronic buffer is. It's uh, a reasonably basic amplifier, but it doesn't have any gain. It merely beefs up the signal um, yeah. that it's got. So uh, Ian's already warned us that the actually amount of torque available from this isn't great. So what are we going to do about that, Ian? Well, you have to increase the torque. Yeah, and how's that done? You have this little uh, device here, mm -hmm. which is a torque amplifier. Um, it consists of two halves. The input shaft comes in and terminates on this arm. So if you can see if I'm moving the arm left, uh, and you can then see the little wheel moving. So mm -hmm. there's a direct connection to that. And why have you got two halves? Uh, two halves because this is the output stage and it's not connected to the input 
directly through here. So there's no actual connection at all no. between that one and no, that one? No, as you can see I'm moving the output mm -hmm. and the input is not moving. Mm -hmm. The only connection there is from the input arm to the output arm are cords. Mm -hmm. And the cords are wrapped around from the input arm a couple of times to the output arm. Mm -hmm. And in the opposite direction, the input arm to the output arm. So the whole thing is balanced. Mm -hmm. And one can uh, deal with positive numbers and the other half will deal with the negative numbers. That is the positive rotation or the negative rotation. Yeah. So it is sort of bi-directional. Um, and how fast do the, these things turn? At about 100 rest per minute. So what does that cause any limiting factors? Is there any uh, positive or negatives uh, about that? Uh, yes, basically the uh, rotation has to be faster. The rotation of these drums has to be faster than the chart. Any likely input speed. Yes, it's input got speed. to be up to or greater than or equal to yes. the very fastest you'll but ever need. What to I wanted to add is that these drums are free to move mm -hmm. on the input shaft and the output mm -hmm. shaft. I can demonstrate it going if the can Yeah, 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 you can do that. Yeah, anything that's demonstrable. And like actually plug it in. Because it's really difficult to, to actually explain mm. how the thing actually works until you actually mm. see it. Um, I don't know where the I'll just put this down, I'll put the one camera down, I'll yep. keep one up so we can I'll plug this in for you. Yeah, um, you. <clears throat> do 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 You just heard it go and come on. Okay, um, so I'll come back over here. Now, the outcome of it is that I could easily stop with my finger the input shaft and let it slip on here. Mm -hmm. The net result is the output. I would have to get a really good pair of pliers. A really good pair of pliers <laughs> to, to slow it down. So, uh, what by what factor is the torque increased through the torque we, applied? You were about 100 to one, didn't yeah, you? 100 to 100 one. 100 to one. That's quite quite a decent bit of gain. Yes. I mean, uh, you know, audio amplifier people will be quite happy with 100. <laughs> yeah. to one. Yes. The drums are driven in opposite directions, and if I turn the amplifier on. You can now see it working. At the moment, there's absolutely no movement whatsoever. Uh, on the zero in, give zero out. Yes. So it's in perfect balance. So I've just got to disturb the balance, and you can now oh. see the. You've got yeah. the inputs turning, the outputs turning the exact synchronism. Yeah. Now, if you now look, I will now try and stop the input shaft. You can and it see. Skids. Yeah. Skids. Just, just look at his fingers there, Tom. Yeah. The, the little wheel is skidding on the plate. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Because and he's I'm, holding it with his fingers. Yes. Yeah. I'm not putting much pressure on yeah. the floor. And now if he grips this, that's not skidding at all, and he's hurting, I he's, cannot, he's hurting his I fingers. Can, you can see it, it's hurting my fingers, and I cannot stop it. Yeah. And the wheel is not slipping. And that was the crucial part of the machine. Yeah. It is. It was what made the machine be able to work yes, after yeah. a number of people uh, yes. tried to make it work for a yeah. number, number of years. So you'll notice that the string is wrapped uh, on this side anti-clockwise yeah. there, and it's wrapped clockwise there. Each of these uh, boilers, uh, boiler ends there, Meccano uh, parts, um, are rotating in the correct direction, mm. so that when the input turns a little bit, it tightens this uh, string onto that drum and pulls it. But as soon as the drum turns, it's naturally going to untighten it. Yeah. So there's a very, very tight feedback loop. Literally a loop. Yeah. <laughs> now, our electronics people would know immediately what feedback loops are, mm. and they're absolutely vital. I did a degree in control systems engineering. Everything is about gain and feedback. And um, the fact that we've got a physical piece of string that is offering very, very immediate and precise feedback is something that the audio people and, and, and the video people as well, actually, um, are really quite jealous of. To get a circuit to work so smoothly, yeah. so easily, with a very high level of gain, is something they have to design circuits to, to, to get this level of precision. Yeah. It's completely innate yeah. in the way this Meccano model works. Uh, is there anything more we need to mention about torque amplification? Um, it works positively and negatively, just to recap. Um, there's a significant large amount of torque here available if you need it, compared with the very weak signal at the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
And that's analogous to the amount of current mm -hmm. that a circuit might be able to provide. We've got a very small current available here that we're picking up from a pickup on your, your LP record, say. If you like to look at this as a record platter, you've got a very small signal and it's being amplified and we've got a moderately big signal here. It's mm -hmm. not enough for a power amplifier, so we couldn't perhaps um, operate a great big windmill outside with the output from here, but we can certainly operate the gears and cogs that are necessary for a large quantity of the machine. And I'm guessing the principle is the same when you are trying to make something like a windmill work though, not necessarily torque amplifiers, but there would be a, a stepping up process surely in that context, or is it different? Uh, well, in a windmill, it's the no. wind that drives well, the course, yeah, so it's the wind. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, bad um, example, bad example. Um, but yeah. uh, uh, where would you need a large amount of feedback? Um, you, you have government. Well, in an oil well, you've worked in the oil yeah. industry. Um, when the drill uh, is going into the rock, mm -hmm. there must be a man who's operating a dirty great big lever yes. that uh, operates the hydraulic motors. And these, these are thousands of horsepower. We're, we're yeah. talking about serious uh, amounts of power that are being used to drill the drill down into the rock. Yeah. So there will be some form of force that is uh, being applied to the drill from yeah. the top. It's grinding its way into the rock, yeah. the guy can hear the motor straining, all of a sudden um, something stops and the guy's going to pull back on the lever to hold it, hold on a minute, you know, something's gone wrong, or they reach the bottom and they, they stop. So the man is actually the feedback loop mm -hmm. in, in this instance. Um, we've got two little men here, one's a positive man and one's a negative man. He, he's watching the trains go on. Oh, Who's uh, who out of you two? Oh, <laughs> but but uh, I'm trying to think where you need precision and high power um, in the real world. Um, the drilling has got the man, um, well, trains mm. and, and, and transport. Mm. Um, there's um, uh, a guy who's in the station, his passengers have finally got on, mm -hmm. and he's got some kind of throttle control on his diesel electric or his electric motive or his steam engine or his whatever. And he wants to just initially apply a, a small amount of power to get the train rolling. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to ramp it up so he's going to increase. Suppose again the man uh, is, is the, the, the uh, feedback, but I've got an automatic car and it's got cruise control. Um, I can leave that car travelling at 70 miles an hour on the flat. When it gets to a hill, it continues to do 70 miles an hour up. Uh, and there must be some kind of measurement of the speed of the car, the speed that the car's actually doing, that is, yeah. the speed that I want to go to, and it's comparing the two. And it's saying, my God, it's gone down to 69 miles an hour, the hill's Speed getting up. steeper, it's going down to 68, put, put a bit more welly on the engine, and it will automatically control the throttle uh, of the car. Conversely, as I get to the summit, and I'm going down the other side of the hill, uh, I get a warning on my dashboard if the car is travelling down faster mm. than the speed that I've chosen. And uh, the other day I was travelling about 60 miles an hour, I came down a very steep part of the uh, M25, um, the car accelerated because of the steepness of the hill, not because the engine was doing. The car was fully off the throttle and then all of a sudden the display on my dashboard started to flash because we were doing about um, 65 miles an hour um, and I'd only asked it to do 60. Mm. And so it's warning me, uh, this particular model of car, it's a Renault, um, doesn't apply the brakes. I had another automatic car years it ago have done it. and it did actually apply the brakes. Yeah. So that would require several different features. My car has, it applies the braking if it starts it to does. go up. Yeah, yes, yeah. if it starts to go above yeah. the desired speed. That involves quite a bit of electronics, quite a bit of hydraulics, quite a bit of uh, power motor, quite a bit of this, that, and the other. It's all there in that little bit there. Yeah. And it's you know you can you can feel it and understand it. This is the hands-on tacit. Um, uh, good word. Very good word you've chosen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is um, innate in yeah. certain aspects of uh, what this model does. Again. Tacit, you can see that this this wheel is gripping, and you can actually understand why it's doing its job correctly, yeah. um, because you can see the physical movement. If you've got a computer program that's going wrong, I'd have to know. I'm a developer, and you have to use some significant tools when you cannot find out why on earth your program is going wrong all the time. Mm -hmm. Here, you can actually physically see it. So once we've got the output um, from this, we now need to decide what we're going to do with it, mm -hmm. and that's actually arbitrary because we've got a signal coming back from the first so the signal has come through through the torque amplifiers there and this is the and our output signal output and now there. we need to choose what we want to do with it mm -hmm. we can either choose it to go on and do some more processing with that output si signal 
on either this table or, or subsequent or tables. tables yeah. Or, in this instance, all we're asking it to do is to calculate the area under the graph. Mm -hmm. That is the distance travelled. So Ian's going to show us where that signal then travels to after it comes out. The signal travels through here to this set of helical gears. Mm -hmm. Then along this shaft here onto the next unit. Mm -hmm. Along through this pair of bevels. Along this shaft to this pair of bevels where it is rotating a piece of threaded rod and is now changing rotational movement into linear movement. And as the table mm -hmm. is in perfect synchronism with the other table, because it's the same physical piece of wood, yep. tacit uh, uh, confirmation of, of, of what you're doing, then a line is scribed on the graph, which is the slow build-up of distance that the car has travelled. And once it's, um, uh, the car has come to a halt, it stopped at the traffic lights. As you can see, the amount of increase of distance has, has flattened out. Mm -hmm. So this is not speed, this is distance. So it uh, travelled roughly 21 kilometres in it. Oh, well, oh. somebody's been fiddling. Yeah, we've yeah, been fiddling with it. Uh, this actually says a different number, but w when we were running this for, for real life last night, this came to 21. 21. Yeah. It had travelled um, 21 yeah. uh, And kilometers. the counter... Yes, that's another aspect yeah. here. We've, we've got a it's kind of a well braces. This is a confirmation yeah. yes. of what we already knew. Now, this is the output shaft here that mm -hmm. drives the, the uh, pen. But here there is a, a scaling factor of 6 to 1, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about scaling factors yeah. soon. And this then drives a cam around, and we can see the cam here. Uh, I'll just I'll come back around again, sorry. I'm yeah. Now, what you've